there's a lot of people in my bubble now my age nobody can afford anything so we're being like pushed out of our own country in a way you know and i think you see that evidently now nobody can afford anything unless it's inherited like many young people from the uk my guest today felt like his government and home country had given up on him with the crazy cost of living the growing crime rates and the insane government overreach particularly during the lockdowns he had reached his breaking point and so at just 25 years old sam decided to pack up his bags and get the hell out starting in spain over the past two years sam has lived in and visited over a dozen different countries and finally ended up right here in chiang mai thailand in this interview not only is sam going to share with you how he convinced his employer to let him do this but he's also going to share with you some of his best tips and tricks so that you can do the same if it's inspiration you're looking for, or if, like Sam, you too are at breaking point, then I'd advise you sit back, get out a pen and paper, and be ready to take notes, because this is an episode of Nomad Talk that you're not going to want to miss. Okay, Sam, thanks for coming onto the channel, mate. Um, perhaps you could uh, just maybe start by saying uh, where you're from and what it is you do. Hello, I'm Sam. I'm from the UK, uh, and I'm one of those so-called digital nomads, remote workers. Um, I think the term digital nomad has become kind of controversial now. People kind of shy away from it. I work in software. Uh, I'm frequently always on a plane, traveling every two to three months, and I avoid my home country as much as I can. Okay, I was going to ask you, um, what made you decide to start traveling? Because you've been traveling for a couple of years now, and is that one of the reasons? <laughs> yeah, so I am from the UK. Uh, I do love my home country, but at the same time, I think recent years, during COVID especially, it was rough. Uh, you know, with the lockdowns and I mean, the cold weather during winter. And I always knew I wanted to, I had a job which allowed me to go work through the internet. COVID just blew that open. Um, you know, everyone was like, okay, working remotely. Um, and while I was working remotely in Manchester for an Oxford job at the time, I was like, well, COVID was I'm coming to an end. And I found some YouTubers and Brett, you're one of them. Uh, and some of them were like, you know, influencers and showing off a glamorous lifestyle. But I found you and you were like, just very straight to the point and real. And you were living in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Well, I knew I couldn't just go right Chiang Mai, Thailand plus seven hours time difference and, and be, that'd be okay. So I jumped back to my old job. I had five years experience with them, well, probably about three or four years at the time. And I was like, okay, look, I'm going to go and want to work remotely abroad. Um, how best can I do this? And the, the thing for me was to go down to Spain or Tenerife. And that was only, that was the same exact time zone as the UK. Um, so I did that. And I got it through after lots of talking and negotiations, just being honestly and, and truthful about it. And then Spain worked out. I was there for about two to three months. I had a great time. I was uh, out of my depressed hole, which was in the UK at the time. Were you nervous about approaching your boss about going to Tenerife, was it? Yeah. How did, how did that go down? So the thing is, um, what I will say is that you can't just go to a new boss and go, I want to go work in Tenerife, same time zone. You, you've got to build trust of your employer. And uh, I, I love my boss. I love my job. I do good work. I, I feel like I work very hard. So it was much easier for me to to push that forward. Also, at the time during COVID, you know, I was working remotely anyway in Manchester. He also said to me, look, you're already doing it remotely. A year ago, I probably wouldn't have said yes, but it, you're doing it anyway, so you can go. And then, um, yeah. Okay. So it's because of the whole COVID transition that you're able to do it. Yeah, I would say that helped massively. But if you look at where things are now, worldwide everyone's working remotely nobody wants to go back to the office and I, I certainly don't i work better away from it i think it's much easier now covid's made that uh more likely for many many uh, remote workers okay and so after tenerife you've been to a few different places over the last couple of years you're only 27 right yeah so you've been traveling since you were harold uh well 25 maybe like just pushing 24 25 i say yeah and how many countries have you been to in the past yeah, so I went to 12 in two years, and I'm counting the ones I did border hops in. So I started in Tenerife, same time zone. Um, that went perfectly fine, came back for uh, a month or so, and I was like, right, now I'm ready to go and do this properly. And then I think I pushed, I met people in Tenerife, and I was asking people all the time, where should I go? Where's good for nomading? And it was winter at the time, it was like uh, February, and I met a guy who was an experienced nomad, you know, he was been doing it for like six, seven years. He's got a little camper van, and he goes around. Um, and he experiences Europe and he goes Asia and, and whatnot throughout. And he said to go to a little place called Bansko in Bulgaria. Well, it's a snowboarding place, um, little town next to the snowboard resort. And it was like £200 a month rent. Um, and that, my idea of starting this journey is like, I can't afford anywhere in the UK, like flat wise, house wise. I mean, 
there's a lot of people in my bubble now my age nobody can afford anything so we're being like pushed out of our own country in a way you know and i think you see that evidently now nobody can afford anything unless it's inherited so what 200 pound a month rent in bulgaria i get to snowboard on the weekends a hobby i've never learned before there's a community there of people like me and i joined this co-living co-working community called uh, co-working bansko you'll thank me for the plug the owner um and it was great i think i was there you know around christmas time um the beginning of the year met people on the weekend go up snowboard learn a new hobby witnessed a leg break poor guy <laughs> wasn't me thankfully um and i did that for two months and that was plus two hours time difference so i said to my boss tenerife worked i'm going to push a little bit further now and show i can still do it so the hours changed slightly but no problems met other people in bulgaria wanted some sun cyprus next i think that's plus three or plus four hours so as you can see, I'm gradually getting further along. I'm getting to the goal of Chiang Mai, you know, I'm just pushing further, showing my boss I'm still working hard and I'm getting there. Cyprus was great. It was really similar to the UK, very convenient. Uh, I even had like people in like tracksuits in the McDonald's there looking like UK Brits, you know, the chavs and stuff. So it felt like a lot like home. I felt like I was home, but just in a sunny beach environment. After Cyprus, um, I actually booked a flight in Cyprus and that was to Thailand. Full transparency with my boss. I met people who don't tell their boss and they're VPNing it and they're getting by and it's totally, you know, you can do that. It is possible. But um, thankfully, the relationship I had with my boss, I never left anything. You know, for me, for me to still be doing this, complete transparency. And I said, look, Thailand, I think about the hours here. So I'm a software developer. Project manager cannot probably do the hours I do in Thailand unless they're up until midnight at night. And so believe me, some people do. I've been to co workings and they're there till midnight and that's totally cool. But it's a, maybe uh, for me, it wasn't, I wouldn't think it would be worthwhile. Um, my hours now in Thailand are roughly around 10 to 7. There's a four hour crossover time with the UK. So in the mornings, I can have some meetings. I have two meetings a week. So it's like totally cool. You know, if, they, if that went up, I'd probably have to move back, but they just let me get on my work. I do the work in time mostly. And um, it's all good, you know. Um, the 10 to 7 works for me. I don't think I could go past the seven hour time difference. Um, but yeah, you need to find what works out for you in your job. Hey there, I really hope you're enjoying the interview. Like many of you watching, my guest today started out with a dream to earn an income online so that he could take back control of his life. But let's be real here this is not an easy thing to do. If you've ever tried to make money online, then you already know that there is so much conflicting advice out there. And once you start to go down this rabbit hole, you can really easily find yourself feeling overwhelmed and then just simply give up. However, before you do that, I would strongly recommend that you check out my Digital Nomad Framework. The Digital Nomad Framework is a free, three-part series where I lay out exactly how I built my first online business. It goes way beyond all of the basic information that you'll find here on YouTube, and it gives you a very clear and actionable strategy that I wish I had when I was first starting out. Now, if you'd like to watch this free of charge, then all you have to do is go to brettdev.com forward slash workshop or click on the link down in the description. What would you say you've got the most out of your travels over the past couple of years? Um, I say independence. I, I, I'm much more sociable now. Um, I don't sound like a proper hippie. I've just got rid of the bad stuff in life, you know. Um, I deleted social media recently. I don't think I'll ever download that again. I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not into anything for clout as they call it or fame or anything like that. I just want to travel the world, meet new people. And I'm just open to anyone, you know, I think, um, with traveling, it's made me realize that any kind of culture, any person, they're all solid. Everyone's really, really nice. Any kind of culture. Um, and I just, I think that's the best thing. You know, I've met so many different nationalities. Thankfully, everyone speaks English. I mean, really, they do. I mean, any country I've gone to in Spain, for example, I'm like, need to learn a bit of Spanish, but going to this co-living and they're all speaking English to me, like everyone. Um, so that's made it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, I just think uh, just free, freedom. Freedom's the big one. You know, I, I, I can go wherever I want. If I don't like a country, I, I, I'm really struggling somewhere. There's no problem. Just catch a flight out, you know, and there's always places now that accommodate people like me. You've got the co-workings, you've got big communities, uh, Wi-Fi. You, you can do your job, I think, better abroad than in a ho in your home country in a little office nobody's happy you're commuting every day for me it was rough i was travel a lot to and from work um i would be exhausted every day i'm a really bad cook as well so i have to go back home and try and cook myself some awful food and it was just 
it sounds basic, you know, in a day-to-day life, but when you can do your job from home, and this is a possibility now, and companies are waking up to it, and you can still do, I think, much better work abroad, uh, abroad and remotely or anything like that, it's something you should really, I think, aim for if it's possible for you. And I, I do believe that you can live a, a much happier lifestyle. So you just described what life was like for you back in England. How would that compare to what life's like for you now? Yeah, um, it's also culture-wise. Um, so every culture is different. But for example, in Thailand, there's a very big cafe culture here. You can work very comfortably from cafes with really good Wi-Fi speeds. I mean, I'm hitting like 800 meg downloads in some cafes, which is eight times as good as home, you know, better than the UK. Um, I'll wake up, go to the gym about three times a week at around 9 a.m. And I, I like starting later in this kind of hot climate as well. It's nice. Come back, have a shower, go to a cafe, meet some friends maybe. Even if not, I can do good productive work without them. And then have some lunch around lunchtime for like, you know, talking about prices, 30 Thai baht, 40 Thai baht from like a, a, a market stall in the evening. I don't just have to commute back from work. I'm already at home. I'll probably go to like a CMU, uh, the, the market, and I get some food there, which is CMU is like this university and there's loads of market stalls everywhere. Meet up with some friends, have some more cheap food and enjoy this like sociable lifestyle. You know, everyone eats out here. You're not just cooking. I mean, my food is terrible. I'm not punishing myself by cooking awful food at home. You know, I'm enjoying somebody else's really good cooked food and Thai food, some of the best. And then I'll call that a day. Where also, you know, you can mix up a little bit, you can go to co-workings. And I want to shout out one co-working, which I watched for your uh, video as well, which really inspired me. It was the yellow co-working one. And they're doing really well now. I was there the other day. And that's how I met my current friends in Chiang Mai through that co-working post-COVID. I would recommend going on a Friday afternoon, evening. There's a bar there outside. You've got a slide and everything. You've got trampolines. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and you can meet people and network that way. So I think mostly on Fridays, I go to co-workings. That's how I network. I meet new people. Um, and I think that's very important. So you've done quite a lot in this short couple of years. If there's somebody watching this video today and they're perhaps looking to follow in your footsteps and do what you've done, what advice would you give them? Um, yeah, be happy being alone. You need to make sure you're okay with your own space. You're going to have a lot of it. Um, I think that is the, the number one thing. Like I just said, it's, I'm really happy being on my own. I don't think I, I would do it with someone else, maybe like a, a girlfriend or something along the way, but I still would require my own space. You'd have to get out for, for a while and have to have my own space. Um, but the, the fact is, is that you're always busy on the move anyway. So it's not like if you just sit in your own, on your own in your room at home and you're like, oh, like I'm fed up, I'm on my own. You're in a cold flat back at home, um, commuting every day. Maybe it's just re life's really getting you down. Because you're so busy and you're always on the move, you don't really have too much time to spend alone in your thoughts. You know, there's always somewhere like, I've got to book an Airbnb soon, or I've got maybe I'll go to this cafe next and I'll, I'll go to this event in the evening or this co working toast in a board game night. You know, there's always something for you to be doing, always something for you to be doing. And trust me, it's so hard to actually go to these things and do them. But um, once you break through that barrier, and you, and you go and do these things and you meet people, it's, it's just the best feeling ever. And one thing I will say is that everyone's in the same boat. You'll meet so many people alone on their journey who are looking to meet someone. It's just super easy to go up to someone in a co-working and just say, hi, how are you doing? Like, what, what are you working on? You know, um, Let's go for a beer. Let's have some food after work. You know, it's, it's just super easy. They all want that. Everyone wants that conversation. Um, but when that doesn't work out for you, just, just be okay in your own space. I recommend building a project if you're like a software dev like me just have a project on the go at times if you're a youtuber you're anything like that just have something to keep you going in the evenings as well oh, and what's next for you sam somehow figure out how to live in thailand get a marriage visa <laughs> maybe not the marriage visa but i don't know i'm really i think this is the place i'm most happy this is going to be my base and i want to just um find a way to live here cool and uh how can people get hold of you for you for, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Will you chat to them inside of Nomad School? Yes, I'm on Nomad School, so yeah, um, I'm available on there. My my profile picture is a photo of Simon Cowell, one of his many faces. Every time I see a photo of Simon Cowell, he's got a different face. It morphs over time. So I'm in there. You can find my Nomad School, but like I said earlier, I've, I've given up on the old Instagram and everything like that. I'm not in it for the clout or the fame, but you can find my Nomad School. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks very much, dude. Cool. No problem. It's Cheers. a pleasure. Thanks.